That's Tata Cats comes to you from the Detroit Radio Network in Lakers, New Jersey. And now, Dr. General Bastow. Come on, Bastow. Bastow. Is my microphone on straight? I can't get the thing on here. All right, here we are. And now we will talk to the skeleton which remains of the Hindenburg. Mr. Skeleton, will you please tell us what you saw? Pardon me, Mr. Skeleton, but I tripped over my lunch bag. Well, while we're here, let's see what's in my lunch bag today. Well, there's peanut butter sandwiches, my favorite. And a small apple from the neighbor's yard. Don't mind the worms. They're only temporary. Once they're in your stomach, the stomach acids will destroy the worms, and you will be no better off than if you went to the Chernobyl nuclear reactor and had lunch there. And now, I would like to share my lunch with you, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. Skeleton. Mr. Skeleton, would you like to have this peanut butter sandwich? How much would you buy this sandwich for, Mr. Skeleton? Hmm, Mr. Skeleton seems to have lost his lower jaw. Oh well, so, so much for Mr. Skeleton's lunch with me. Mr. Skeleton, why don't you go up across the airfield a little bit, why don't you? So I can eat my lunch in privacy since you can't eat and I don't like, I don't like people staring at me when I'm eating, okay? Is that it clear? Is that an order?
does not like comedians. He doesn't laugh at your jokes. General Presto laughs at his own jokes.
Soviets to surrender their weapons and face the consequences of their actions over the last 40 years. And now, William Shatner will give the Soviets the alternative to war. William Shatner. Spike! I'm losing command. I'm losing command. I'm losing command. He's a Spock. He's dead Spock. <laughs> Greetings, beautiful mutants, and how may we be of service? acid-dripping party. Yes, there are degenerates everywhere. 
I look down and I see a hippie laying on the floor unconscious. I wonder what he's been snorting. <laughs> Inside this door, we see the rabbit skin people. What are you doing in there? I know, just, we're just doing the wrong thing, man. So, where'd you get the haircut, man? That's not funny. Wow, man. Hey, man, why don't you go talk to the dude who's running this party? That's a good idea. It's a good thing I thought of it. It's my glory, so I'll enjoy it the way I wish. Goodbye. Yeah, man, like you lost your fucking cream. What? What was that? I uh, yeah, yeah, man. Just eat over there. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's all right. You fucking cool. This this gentleman here looks like he's running the party. Excuse me. What, what, man? Are you running the party? Yeah, man. Hey, where's you want to buy a glass, man? No, I have a pair of glasses. And I like to wear my own, please. Hey, man, like, uh, hey, it's your own, it's your own trip, man. Why, well, hey, man, just, you know, mingle around with the people, man. I'll do that. Uh, are there any foreign dignitaries here? No, I, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, there's, a, there's a man from the rock group, the rock group, uh, the Clash here, man. And there's, uh, there's, uh, there's somebody from t here, man. Hey man, just, you know, I, I gotta go, man. I got my, my girlfriend calling, okay? Hey, hey man, thank you. Uh, okay. Um, here's a gentleman over here who's passed out on the floor. I'll wake him up. You, sir. You, sir, get up. Hey, man, what? what, what hey, man, uh, who are you? Hey, man. Am I in jail or something? No, I'm General Blasto, and I'm at my son's party. Have you seen my son? Uh, no, man. Uh, hey, man. Uh, hey, look, look, that girl over the corner, man, she, she's waving to you. What is she waving at me for? I, I can't get it up. Well, man, everybody's got their own trip, man. Hey, but, uh, hey, man, just join the party, Mr. Uh, what's your name? General Blasto. Yeah, man. Uh, around here, we just go by first names, man, so... Why don't I call you Blasto? That's just fine. Thank you. Yeah, man. Sure thing. Well, it's time for General Blasto to take a drink. Here we go. Ah, uh, very good. Ah, uh, wonder what was in it. Hey, man, that was the, the uh, radioactive punch, man. We got it from Three Mile Island. Three Mile what? What did you say? Oh well, this is Pinto Blasto. I'll come back as soon as I find my son. Goodbye. <laughs> Pretty stone since you last saw me. Here's some scenes from Gilligan's Island. Is that? These are our origin. These are our children.
time for you to vote for Wheelock Whitney. Everyone, please cast their ballot in the stage door next to you. It will be fine that we all got together and voted on this grand day like today. And now, the narrator will talk to himself. Because of his schizophrenia. Yes, I was astounded when I first saw the Dukes of Hazard driving around in their fast vehicles and not knowing what they're saying to each other. Boss Hog, family fat man from Alabama or something. Then there's a fat old man with a white beard. Seemed like a Tristan fella. But you never know when he's going to turn you in. This is Terrell Blasto at Christmas time. Merry Christmas, everyone. And I'm sure that you don't have to buy as many gifts for me as you did last year. So, it's only consequential that you bury the hatchet today. And now, the news. General Blaster Theater players will stand in line and wait for a name to be called to the podium. It is only four o'clock here in New York City and I am getting tired. Hello? Oh no, stay tuned now. Stay tuned for new sounds from General Blasto for the background sounds. Oh. I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, you came out way over 90 pounds. I'll be fine after, after a drink or two. I can't do anything right. I might as well be dead. This is the voice of Magic Blasto, and I'm waving my magic wand upon the land. See how the trees grow. The people walk about the town and crow about the land that General Blasto made. Stay tuned for more info. Stay tuned or else. This is Blasto. I have a cold and I want to be at home. Time is attention. When I get my voice back, I'll be General Blasto again. So, send those cards and letters and all those scary gifts. Attention. Oh, I'm too tired. I'll be back when I'm well. This is for General Blasto, getting better at my home. I've got many of cards and letters, and I wish that you can to continue. So, I really got off the phone, so goodbye. This is General Blasto, watching the sports on television. My voice is not back yet, so stay tuned. General Blasto's camping adventure, now. Uh, come on, General Blasto, we're going to the city. Going to the city? Are you kidding? No, General Blasto, we're all packed. Let's go. All right, let me get my television set, and my TV set, and my audio-visual set. Excuse me. General Blasto, tell us a call. Oh, well, we'll be back when the adventure begins. Oh? I'm supposed to say that. Die. <laughs> the century passes. We see more people than we want to see every day. I'm still looking out through that periscope outside the yard. I don't see anything. <laughs> Do you see anything? 
to be back to General Plasto as soon as I get off this goddamn chair. It's full of holes. But I'm gonna just stand here and look at the chair until I die. So, back to General Plasto with the more of well, whatever he gives you. Goodbye. Hello? General Plasto is providing the transportation for all the people to go to Hawaii to dance and sing. And now, a benefit for Dwight D. Eisenhower. Hit it, Ike. I'm dying, General Plasto. Help me! Alright. Stand at attention. <laughs> That's better. And now, you shall march. March outside. <laughs> That's better. Now, get off the podium. Hello? Where'd I go? I'm down here on the floor. You bastard. Help me up. Why would I want to help you, Ike? Die. <laughs> The land of Eisenhower would like to welcome you to the land of the dead. Quarkum, I hope you die. And now, it's railroad time for General Blasto at the railroad station. Come in, General Blasto, come in. Put that train over there. Oh, oh, what? Oh, this is General Blasto. Hello? Good, you're all awake and listening. Well, here I am at the train station, and I'm happy to say that number nine has missed its step and is laying over on track 23. Due to technical difficulties beyond my command, there is no picture. And now, audio time with General Blasto. This is General Blasto, making my appearance the last time since I've had a cold. Blah. See, I still got a cold. Just a second. This is Blasto. Now, commanding the entire U.S. economy with the help of Rockefeller. Come in, Rockefeller. Hello? This is Rockefeller, and I turn over the operations to General Blasto. Now, everyone get out there and do what General Blasto says. Load those cannons. On those helicopters and let's get going. Thank you. And now, I will give you the list of volunteers, which is why we're here after all this time. And here to give you that list is Rockefeller. All right, Rocky, let's hear the hockey. All right, General Basto. Now, the list of commentary starts like this. Africa is not on a one nation anymore. It's gone. We didn't find it. It's disappeared. All right, back to you, General Basto. Yes, now I'm holding my breath because he farted. Oh. General Blasto knows no myth. He is oblivious to Vulcan intentionalism and Kirk's intent. General Blasto will go into the hearts and souls of the soldiers before they die. Oh. Blasto speaks. Blasto speaks. Blasto speaks. Attention, attention, listen, pray. And then, you know, oh, all right. I went home and hid in the bushes. The end. I walked through the door, and then I fell into the bushes. I dug up the bushes and slept in a hole. I was hit by a semi-truck, and then I fell into the bushes. I fell off the roof and into the bushes. Junior burnt down the bushes, and then I fell into a tree. And now, 
I'll give you my results. Live in a concrete building. There is no plants, no trees, no animals, nothing. And now, stone. This is Todd at the football game. And he's got the ball and he's running and his 22 is then he slipped and fell on his knees. I tell you, I like to come off with ball. It's exciting. And now, stone. Uh, wait to take. Stay tuned. The noise is only temporary. I know. This is a revolution. This is the world of General Brasto. Hello? General Blasto, Lost in the Fog, by Ian Spelling. Oh, I'm on my way to the fog, and I'm lost, and I'm cold. Hello, hello, hello. This is General Blasto. It is people. All right, my fellow Americans, I'm pleased to tell you today that I've signed legislation that will outlaw Russia forever. We begin <laughs> bombing in five minutes. <laughs> the world is General Blasto's little oyster. <laughs> I keep it in my pocket when I look at it when no one else is looking. <laughs> it saves an embarrassment, and we all will walk home with a mighty smile. Like this. Oh, Derek has got soft skin, which General Blasto appreciates with mighty dignity. Oh, Derek is looking good. And those legs, oh, those luscious legs. Mmm, I could have a slice of them. And now she takes off her hat, places her hair, and lays down and makes herself very comfortable. Dudley Moore is scared by a waiter who says, I've got this drink for you. Drink it before it gets cold. Dudley Moore says, what? And now the surf comes in, washing in photon fish and desserts from the desert. And now we'll watch as Dudley Moore goes out into the water, piggyback on board a lifeguard's back. Yes, people at the beach, they know what they're talking about, don't they? It is very apparent that Dudley Moore has only two men to live. I know we can say poison to my poison like a carnival, but I know what he did. The League of Non-Smokers says, Bush way. This is General Blasto. Before the news, I would like to congratulate the U.S. Senate for its victory in the House. Hello? And now, General Blasto's earthquake vote, starring Charles and Hector, George Kennedy, and selected other guests selected by General Blasto on the big list. That was out last week, if you missed it, touch it. My concern now is that the set is too loud and I'm going to have a headache before I fall asleep. It is now November 6th, 1986, and the time is now. You have heard rumors of D-Day from the start, and now D-Day has come. It's time to invade Normandy and Kilimanjaro with stops in Australia, England, and Norway. NATO will be happy to help you when 
that you cannot land. And NATO is friendly. They are friendly to all who are friendly to them. Carry plenty of cash, cigarette stamps, and pudding pills because you'll be out there a long time. Stay tuned for war coming soon on General Blasto's network. Yes. Hello? It is late at night. General Blasto is sleeping. I'm talking to you through my extrasensory perception, known in the local world as ESP. I've got little hairs on my tongue, and it's hard to see through that hair. I landed my first chopper in the backyard through confessions of Blasto. I ran over a dog with my jeep my first day on service. I became fat and lazy and smoked in smoking chairs for two years. I went to Nubibia and spoke the local language. I don't know fat from fiction. It hurts my brain to think so. So, I'd like to thank Warren Green for being a good citizen and a good commander. He's got a dog that died. It's still sitting upright near the fireplace. And Lauren talks to it every night since his wife died ten years ago. But now, Lauren Green has a robot dog. Now, Lauren Green has a robot dog. Fetch. Fetch, girl. Fetch. Good girl, now sit. Froggy? Has anyone seen my froggy? I miss my froggy. When will froggy come home? This is Dino Blasto. The war drags on. The slippery Los Angeles Giants defeated us once again in Mexico City. And little did they know, Clark Kent was there to help us with his cape. He unfolded a mighty picnic that the super friends enjoyed without us. So we waited around. And who did we see on the corner? It was Floyd Nelson, con artist and laughable look-alike to many Hollywood stars. Oh, looks like he just fooled somebody new. Oh well, you learn it once. Anyway, the concert and the funerals and the festivals are occurring now. Fit in at your latest army headquarters in the town nearest you. This is General Blasto. Yes, it is 
fortunate that these volunteers have shown up so quickly. I'll help you, General Blasto, if I can. Hello, hello. Don't talk into my microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Why are you talking to mine? Uh, okay. And now, General Blasto will give his speech if you've got five minutes. You don't? Oh, well, I'll come back tomorrow. Maybe we'll be here then. Goodbye. General Blasto went to a house and looked into a crime. There were stains on the walls, stains on his knees, and stains upon his hands. Then he was called to the army. He really went into a soil. For he looked on top of his forehead. His head had grown into a boil. And so he went and vomited in the ladies' room next door. And so General Blasto is known to you for sure. I am the brother of General Blasto. And Otto Blasto knows General Blasto good. Out of range. So, help me out. Spock, help me, Spock. Oh, help me, Spock. Oh, help the Spock and land the ship and do the planet for Can we land himself a little piece of property? Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, no. Captain Cook has blown up on his piece of property. Look there. Who's in command? Who's in command? Uh, this is General Blasto turning his head from side to side, telling you to come back to Earth, America. This is a generalized message from the General Blasto the Presidential Fund. General Blasto has been waiting for your letters, and none have arrived. I repeated my address seven times in the last ten years, and boy am I hot. So, stay tuned for more Blasto. Baby, it's Blasto. He's got his face left, you know. And if he gets into your house, you better call him off so he can chew a hole in his shoe. His shoe will sink, and so will his leg, and then the other leg, and then he'll go down in his story as the last with the hole in the shoe. Blasto, brushing his teeth. Oh, this is the old man. I'm telling you that General Blasto is in danger. He's an incredible and excruciating danger. So, when you hear the beep, well, you'll know that General Blasto is about to be threatened with an instrument of his destruction. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>